Peter Trinelli. You have most time. Thank you. Thank you. What a marvellous studio audience we've got. Nice to see you at home as well. It's, uh, I've got to tell you, the producer saw me last week. He said, you're looking a bit rough. He said, you'd better go and get, uh, you'd better go and get a check-up. And I realised what a check-up was when I went. You know, you write a check-out and then the doctor says, no, no, it's gone up. That's what it is. And they, sent me, they sent me to this, uh, this, this hospital, the Vinnie Jones Memorial Hospital. Oh, it was rough. I'll tell you what, there were three in every bed, honestly. <laughs> I walked in there and there was this uniformed fella. He came straight up to me and said, uh, take your clothes off. And I, and I took my clothes off and then I realised he, he was only the car park attendant. I just felt a fool. I got in to see the doctor and he, he was a dart specialist. He, 15 years training. Five years at medical school, and he had ten years at the dog and ferret. <laughs> wonderful doctor, wonderful doctor. I knew he was a darts fanatic because on the syringe there were flights. You see, that gives it, it gave it away to me. And what I didn't like, really, was he stood me up against the wall and he threw the syringe at me from seven feet nine, you know. <laughs> and it, it really worried me because he was aiming for the double 19. Now, that, you know what that is? <laughs> eh? I'll tell you. That brings tears to anybody's eye, I'll tell you. It makes your eyes water that, does that tell? <laughs> and I'll tell you something, tonight's prize, bullish prize, is going to make your mouth water because it's a superb prize. I know what it is because I'm staff, you know. I do know what it is. Let's meet our contestants tonight and see if two of them can win on tonight's edition of Bullseye. <laughs> Fine, thank nice you. to see you. Customer services supervisor. That's right, in a packaging company. Yeah, and you're a little bit of an athlete as well, aren't you, Margaret? Um, yes, I've competed in a few half marathons. That's brilliant, something. It's 13 miles, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you do a lot of training for that? Um, about three or four times a week. Really? How many miles do you do at one set? Um, five or six. That's good, excellent. We've got Margaret from... Whereabouts is Westbury, Margaret? God only knows. I, I, <laughs> Wiltshire. I mean, is... Is it near? Where's it near? Bath. Your job, Margaret? A mess steward. I work for the army. Really? In, in, in a what? In a, a canteen? Or a, a... In a bar. The bars, we used to call them naffies. Are they not naffies now? Uh, ours isn't. Ours is for officer candidates. Oh, uh, I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night, Rosanna. Thank Thanks you. for coming down. How are you, Phil? Fine, Jim. How are Phil's you? Phil's got a little secret, which you'll see later on, uh, when he stands up because it goes dark. Um, <laughs> Where about you from, Phil? Ilkley in West Yorkshire. Fine. Are you, and your job, sir? I'm a gas service engineer with British Gas. That's going to the houses, is it? Yeah, customer service. Yeah. You're a very tall fella. Um, we'll tell you how tall he is. He's six feet, eight and a half inches tall. Um, he's the tallest man we've ever had on Bullseye. And if he wants to come back again, he can do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Richard, you're from, yeah. from Ilkley as well, sir. Ilkley as well, Jim, yeah. Are you, are you self-employed, Richard? I'm a self-employed carpenter joiner, yeah. <coughs> I've got to tell you at home, these two guys have played in, a, in darts charity marathons, and how long's that? Over the last what? Over the last five years. Five years, £3,000 yeah. for charity. That's not bad, is it, on darts marathons? Well done. You broke the 48-hour world record by over 300,000 points. Yeah. Now, that's some play. It also tells me that you're both very good darts players as well. Try to be. Yes, which could well count later on in the evening, couldn't it? We're going to move on now. We're going to move on to our third couple tonight. We've got Sean Jenkin and, oh, and, and Edward Tag Prince from, and you're from Bodmin, down there in, in the West Country. Nice, nice to see sir. you, boys. Lovely. And you've got your Cornwall rugby shirt, Sam, yeah. is that right? Next to two Yorkshiremen. Next to two Yorkshiremen, <laughs> yeah. We nearly had a civil war here today, didn't we? We'd, but of course we didn't because they remained extremely professional. Right. Carpenter as well, Sean? Yeah. You met your wife by chance, didn't you? Yeah, I seen her photograph in a local paper. Did you? And then went downtown next week and seen her in the pub and got talking. So you went in the pub and you said, oh, you seen you in the paper last That's week. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Edward Tag Prince. Now, you're a warehouse manager and, and you work for your wife, is that? I'm afraid I do, yeah. Well, don't we all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, uh, you're, you're quite a bright lad. Well, no, I'm current brain of Bodmin, which, if you've ever been to Bodmin, it's not that much of an achievement. <laughs> <laughs> At least I can tie my shoelaces and answer my name. Well, <laughs> Six superb contestants. Give them a round of applause. Excellent. Well done. Really good. Really good. Come on, let's do it. Let's play it again. Go on, off you go. We'll, uh, we'll get on with the game. What about those for contestants, Tony? I think they're brilliant, Jim. Excellent. Sounds oh, good. Really good. good really good. All right. Sounds as Tony says like we're going to have a good evening tonight. We've got the questions here all waiting to be answered. A uh, lot of money here if they can get their act together. And over there, our three brains, including the brain of Bodmin, waiting to play bullseye.
Right, to remind you at home, correct answers in the first round were £30 each, and we move on 50, 100, and then of course the middle game and through to the bullish prize board. Let's play bullseye. Come on, Margaret for Margaret. Choose a subject. I'd like faces, please, Jim. All right, my love. Well, let's see if Margaret can do it for you. Let's see how yeah, tonight's Margaret. edition goes. 50. No oh. chances taken there by Margaret. Try and tell us before Bully comes in, who's that? Ruby Wax. Ruby Wax. That was all right. Good. £30 you've got. Well done. Richard for Phil. Spelling, please, Jim. All right. Come on, Phil. Spelling. Well, that's in history. In history. In 1215, which king was forced by the English barons to issue the Magna Carta? King Harold, Jim. It's not. It's King John. King John. We move on. Early days, Richard, don't worry about that. Tag for Sean. Uh, places, please, Jim. Places Sean would like. That's in faces and the subject's gone, Jim. Oh, so a calamitous start there for two of you. Um, here we go on round two. What do you think, Margaret? Great Britain, please, Jim. Great Britain, yes. Great Britain, Margaret, please. Well, that's gone in words of subjects there, Jim. Another £50 for you here. In radio communication, which word means message received and understood? At the end of a message... Roger. ..is absolutely right. That's why they, why they keep calling that girl in the bill, Roger. That's absolutely <laughs> right. Good. We move on. Richard for Phil. I'll try spelling again, Jim, please. We'll try it again, Phil. Take your time now. Spelling with like. Think about it, Phil. 50. 50 pounds. We're on the way. Please spell the vegetable broccoli. B R O C C O L I. I'll check it with Bully. B R O C C O L I. He didn't put the H in. Well done. Got 50 pounds. Well played. I think you were thinking about that, weren't you then? We move on. All right. Tag for Sean. That's showbiz, please, Jim. We'd like showbiz, please, Sean. Yeah, Sean. Well, that's gone in sport, but the subject's there. Although Athens was favourite in the six-city bid to stage the 1996 Olympics, it lost out to which city? Barcelona? It wasn't. In fact, it was Atlanta, Georgia. At the end of round two, we've got £130 for the two girls who are in the lead, with £100 from Richard and Phil, and Tag and Sean still to get off the mark. OK, we'll move on. Questions £100 each now, so these scores can increase rapidly. Uh, the categories we've got left, let's have a look. We've got showbiz, affairs, books, Britain and places. One of those you can choose, Margaret, for Margaret. Places, please, Jim. OK, Margaret, let's take it steady. Yes, 30, Jim. She's played it cautiously. She's playing very sensibly for you. Of which European country was King Umberto II the last king until he abdicated in 1946. Spain? It's not. It's Italy. Italy. We move on. Richard for Phil. Showbiz, please, Jim. Showbiz we'd like, Phil. Well, that's gone in the furs and the subjects there, Jim. For £100, takes you into the lead here, Richard, if you can tell me this. Which politician won the 1990 Nobel Peace Prize. Gorbachev. Well done. That's fine. £200 you've got. We move on. Tag for Sean. Have Britain, please, Jim. Britain we'd like, Sean. Yes, that's £50. £50. Pounds. You're on your way nicely. So the pressure's off now a bit, Tag. Here we go. In which English city is there an annual goose fair? Nottingham. Was that a guess? Yeah. <laughs> what a good guess. £100 worth. Well played. Gives us, at the end of game one, £160 for the two Margarets, Richard and Phil with £200, and our two boys from down in the southwest, £150. Well played. <laughs> I really don't believe that guess. That was incredible. Right, we move on now. Traditional match play dartboard for game two. We ask the three dart players to compete in three rounds of darts against each other to win for their partner a question, and the value of that question is the winning score. So it's pounds for points. Anybody's prize board tonight. Over to Tony. Right you are, Margaret. 
this round. It's 12, 5, and 18. So that's 35. Okay, Phil. 35 is the score. 20. 20. And 20, 60. That's fish on. 60. And 20, 41. So the first round to fill with 60, Jim. Richard, 60 pounds here to take you a little further into the lead. Which American Democratic senator's name is associated with Chappaquiddick? Uh, Edward Kennedy. Edward Kennedy is right. Which gives us 160 pounds playing 260 pounds playing 150 pounds. Back to two. Hi, Margaret. Five, five, and treble one, which is thirteen. Okay, Phil, thirteen. Twenty. And two. So that's 42. And that's the score to be, Sean. 42. 20. Treble one. And one, 24. So the second round to fill with 42, Jim. James Barry bequeathed the copyright of his book, Peter Pan, to a London hospital. Which one? A complete guess, it's at Norman Street. In fact, it's Great Ormond Street, but for £42, we'll let you have that. Gives us £160, playing £302, playing £150. <laughs> OK, Margaret, final round. It's five. Twenty. And treble five, which is 40. OK, Phil. 40 the score. Trouble five, trouble twenty, and twenty ninety five. So there you have it, Sean. Ninety five, twenty, twenty, and twenty sixty. But the final rounds are full with ninety five. What is the Japanese word for goodbye, Richard? I don't know, Jim. We can offer it to Tag, and you can have £60, Tag, if you can tell me. Sayonara. Sayonara gives you £60, gives you a total of £210. Sadly, it's not enough. The girls have got £160. The boys from the West Country, £210. Through to Bullish Prize Board tonight, Richard and Phil. We've got to say cheerio to Margaret and Margaret and Tag and Sean. In you go. <laughs> Well played, the two Margaret's. She's given a lot of people a lot of pleasure. It's been very, very good. Tightish as well. £160 for the girls. Here it comes. I shall count it out now. It's going to take me two minutes. £210 for the boys. Bodmin has not been his grace, sir. It's been nice to have you all with us. We'll see you in the second half. It'll take me about two minutes to do this. A lot of fun in the second half. Don't miss it. See you then. <laughs> Welcome back to this, uh, this elongated edition of Bullseye. My word, you are a tall lad, Phil. You're giving our cameramen some terrible problems here. They can't get up there, you know. You can relax now. It's bronze bully time. Here, of course, it's where we ask the professional dart player to throw nine darts and we hope score 301 or more. And if they do that, we'll double it and we'll give it to the charity chosen by our two boys from Yorkshire tonight. We've got somebody rather special tonight. First time on Bullseye, England international. As she throws for charity, please make a very, very welcome, <laughs> Jane Stubbs. Uh, thanks. Uh, that's a nice applause there for you, Jane. Wish you the best of luck. Off we go. 
20, 20, and 20, 60. Good start. Trouble 20, 20, and 181. Unlucky. It's 141, yeah? Still three to go. Twenty. Twenty. And treble twenty. One hundred. What a nice <laughs> dinner. <laughs> That's all right. Two hundred and forty-one <laughs> first round. Yeah, well done, Greg. Ooh, ooh. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, when that trouble went in, you were relieved on that, weren't you? I was absolutely relieved. Absolutely marvellous. And, uh, and this afternoon when you were practicing, they were bobbing in like mad, weren't they? <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> it was and never mind, don't worry. We're delighted about that. Tell us about the charity, Richard. It's the Ilkley Talking newspaper. Yes. Um, it, it helps the people who are blind to keep, keep up with their current news. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that you work on that on a weekly basis, sending it out. A lot That's of people right, work on, yeah. on tapes, isn't That's it? Right, yes. Yeah, I do little bits of it. People ask us for little interviews. It's, yeah. it's always a pleasure to do it as well. Mm. So that money's going out, so that's good. I we leave now, that's over. You, she's been worried all day about this. <laughs> Isn't she? She's super. <laughs> Listen, tell us, you're, you're a civilian working with the police force. I certainly am, yeah. As a very attractive lady, how do you get on with it? Big... <laughs> you can stay. These... <laughs> <laughs> these big strapping policemen, I mean, they must bore you to tears, do they? No, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no, not at all, no. no you no. quite enjoy oh, yeah. working in, in Melg. In fact, you're a darts player and you do play with the men, do you, at darts? <laughs> I do. Yeah, and, and at that level, you probably beat most of them, do you? Oh, I'm not doing too bad at the moment. Yeah. Thanks very much indeed, Jim. Will you, if if we do some more next year, will you come back? I'd love to. You'll be more than welcome. I know you're going to wish the boys all the best. Thanks, well done. Thank Excellent. Thank Pleasure to have you on the show, Jim. Okay. Good girl. Jane Stubbs, ta -ra. <laughs> No problem. Yeah, good girl, isn't she? She's been an absolute delight to have on the show. She really has. It's easy now. Absolutely simple. Bullish prize board. You can reach it without throwing the darts. Let's see what he's got for you tonight. In one! From Mozart to Madonna, everything sounds better on this MIDI hi-fi with CD player. In two! Guaranteed to make it rain, a fully equipped outdoor barbecue. In three! Rock yourself to sleep in style with a pine rocking chair. In four! This high-pressure cleaner will knock spots off the dirtiest car. It's a millionaire's egg timer. Well, it's a stylish carriage clock. In six. Now you can talk to yourself with the aid of this combined phone and answering machine. In seven. An electronic keyboard that gives you an orchestra at your fingertips. In eight. Something that blends in with your kitchen. A state-of-the-art food processor. And bully special prize. Play the champions on this fully automatic electronic dartboard. Now then, boys, you heard the nine prizes. It's a test of memory as well as skill. Can you remember where the prizes were you'd perhaps like to take home with you? But the main thing is you must get into the red. Keep out of the black and in the red. Nothing in this game for two in a bed. OK? The board's lit. When you win a prize, the light will go out to help you. OK? Six for you, Phil, and three for Richard. OK? Off you go. We'd like you to put all the lights out on the board. Listen to Tony. Take your time. OK, Phil, that's the way. Just relax into it. No rush. Best of luck. First of the three. <laughs> That's a bullseye! Right the That's the electronic dartboard. Now you're away. Just keep them out. Well played. Super. Black. Black again. Right, unlucky. Now then. It's all right. So, Richard. All on the outer. It's black. That's red. It's number Fine. one. That's the MIDI hi fi. How do you want it now? Just in black. Unlucky. Right, okay. Three dance left. Two you've got. Okay, Phil. Make these count. No rush at all. 
Red number six. Fine, that's the phone and answering machine. Red number seven. Excellent, that's the keyboard. And red number now eight. Now you're together, that's fine, that's the food processor. Now let's have a look at what you've won. The MIDI Hi-Fi, the telephone and answering machine, the keyboard, the food processor, and Bully's special prize, the electronic dartboard. You've done well. <laughs> you've played really well, boys. Now, the £241 that lovely Jane Stubbs got for you, that's on its way to your charity. And where did we say that was going, Phil? The talking newspaper. That's the talking newspaper. That's on its way right at the end of the programme. Listen to this next bit very carefully. We're going to ask you to lay on the line all your prizes and your money. £302. Would you like to gamble that package against tonight's star prize, hiding behind Bully? 101 or more with six darts. Non dart player to go first, all right? It's all or nothing money and prizes and star prize or BFH, bus fare home, <laughs> which is not a lot back up to where you live. You've got the time it takes the board to revolve to tell us what you'd like to do. Audience, help them. Yeah! What do you think? Yeah! Yeah. Phil. I've got to say, I can see your lovely wife over there, and she's smiling. I don't know what she's trying to say to you, but you tell me. We're going to gamble. You're going to have a go for it? <laughs> All the very best. All right. Richard first, and then Phil. Come on. We say it to everybody. Please listen. Take your time and listen to Tony. Yeah, nice handshake there. And Richard? So you're on the first one, but just settle yourself in. We'd love you to win. All right. Best of luck. Five. Nineteen. And eleven. So that's thirty-five. So, Phil, it's sixty-six or more for tonight's star prize. Double 20. <laughs> Two to go. But that's 11. <laughs> <They've done it>. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Love you. Love you. Stay with me. Come and have a look at this. Come and have a look at it. Come on. Come and have a look at this. It's a wonderful holiday for four on the beautiful island of Penang. Known as the Pearl of the Orient, Penang makes an ideal base to sample its exotic delights. Get someone else to do all the work and leave time to explore. From the busy outdoor markets to the cool mystery of its historic architecture. No transport problems here. Try this for size. Or a night at the opera. But however busy the day, it's easy to find peace and tranquility in the island paradise of Penang. And it's all for the throw of a dart. A dart. <laughs> we, uh, we can't believe it. Throw to bits. Two great fellas, two Yorkshire lads, and they've done it. They've won the star prize. They've got all the prizes they've won. Of course, £302 you take that to spend in Penang, if you like. It's worth about nine pence over there. Thanks to, uh, to Jane Stubb. She was superb getting the £241 for the talking newspaper. Thank you for watching Bullseye. Thanks to our studio audience. They've enjoyed it as well. We love a winner on Bullseye. You could win next week. Watch us again. You can't beat a bit of bully every Sunday. Bye. <laughs> Chase is back tomorrow at 9 on Challenge. Join us for fun and frolics and intense quiz show action. Tomorrow at 9 over on Pick, we're hitting the road with the Road Wars.